Hello, uh, welcome to another session of Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, uh, coming to you as part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, our program a joint effort with the Digital Pathology Association and PATH presenter. Our case today comes from the realm of uh, GYN pathology. It's a 37-year-old woman who has had some abnormalities in her uh, menstrual cycle, um, and the clinician is concerned uh, that she may have Asherman syndrome. Well, if you're like me, uh, you probably hear that uh, syndrome and go, uh, what? So uh, after consulting uh, Dr. Google, uh, let's just review what Asherman syndrome is. Uh, it's characterized as uterine scarring with the formation of synechiae uh, within the uterine cavity. And it can be varying degrees of severity. Um, and most often this is related to some sort of prior trauma potentially even iatrogenic trauma related to curatage or cesarean section. Uh, sometimes it's associated with endometriosis or post-inflammatory or infectious disorders. And usually the symptoms are somewhat hypomenstrual type of things or amenorrhea type of changes, along with pain and uh, infertility. Uh, usually the diagnosis is not a pathologic diagnosis uh, and uh, is made via ultrasound and or some combination of hysteroscopy uh, identifying the uh, gross features of these uh, synechiae between uh, the uh, uh, mural walls of the end of, of the uterine cavity. So uh, putting aside that as a, a target diagnosis, what did we find? Well, uh, the curatage was performed in this uh, patient uh, in an attempt to relieve the, the symptom and I believe help the patient become pregnant. Uh, but in fact, what we received were several fairly solid fragments of tissue, uh, one probably uh, endomyometrium, uh, and then these others uh, uh, more chunky uh, endometrial tissue along with some uh, blood clot. Uh, so uh, is this a polyp? Is there something going on here? As we can see, there's not a lot of uh, normal type of endometrium here uh, that we can uh, compare, and each of these fragments seems to be hypercellular and uh, composed of uh, uh, some degree of epithelial proliferation. Now there is a suggestion here that we're dealing with a polyp. We have some thick walled uh, blood vessels here, rather uh, tortuous, um, admixed with this uh, proliferative process in the endometrium. Uh, looking a little more closely here, we can see that the architecture is distorted. Uh, we have some solid areas as well as uh, some uh, mildly enlarged and somewhat irregular glandular spaces uh, overlapping here. So what is going on here? Well, as we look at an individual uh, glandular uh, cluster, we can see that this central solid tissue is fairly bland, uh, and it really has the appearance of what are termed squamous morules. Uh, so these are benign squamous elements, non-keratinizing, and that we uh, occasionally encounter in both hyperplastic and in non-hyperplastic uh, uh, epithelia or mucosa. Um, and so pretty much we can probably just sort of visually subtract out that as an element of this process and then focus more uh, specifically on the glandular component. Uh, we see that there are some mitoses uh, in this glandular component and it's uh, the glands are well, slightly enlarged and somewhat more closely spaced. There is some intervening stroma um, and a little degree of undulation and so forth to this epithelium uh, with then the occasional squamous morial intervening. Looking at the cells themselves, however, we do not see, we do not see any significant uh, cytologic atypia. Now, granted, these are not uh, entirely normal endometrial cells. They don't have entirely normal basal uh, nuclei. The nuclei are a little bit on the um, enlarged side and so forth. But by and large, uh, if we were to see this gland in and of itself in an endometrial uh, setting, more widely spaced, we would not place it in the atypical category. Um, and so uh, based on that finding, uh, we have here a set scenario where we have uh, glandular crowding, uh, some architectural abnormalities uh, of undulation and slight uh, glandular enlargement but lacking any significant cytologic atypia. So under the uh, earlier criteria, this would probably classify uh, as a complex hyperplasia, but a complex hyperplasia without atypia. So in the current uh, WHO classification, uh, 
uh, I think we could safely categorize this as uh, endometrial hyperplasia without atypia. Um, here's a, uh, a more banal, probably non-involved gland here, maybe one with tubal metaplasia. And we can see there's not a real appreciable difference uh, between uh, the cytology uh, between this gland and these other glands. And that helps um, in being reassured that this is a uh, non-atypical hyperplasia. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of those uh, normal endometrial glandular elements to compare with. Uh, here are a couple here, probably more normal uh, versus the process. Not a significant cytologic difference here uh, between these. And whether you're using the EIN system or the hyperplasia system, I think this uh, uh, really is not sufficiently different or distinctive uh, to push it into the uh, pre-neoplastic or potentially uh, neoplastic category. And certainly for a, a patient who's in a young age group, uh, that uh, should be reassuring. Uh, so our uh, uh, thoughts here, just to summarize, non-atypical hyperplasia, uh, of course, does have an estrogenic uh, stimulation component. Uh, there is increased glandular stromal ratio, but no cytologic atypia. Uh, squamous morular metaplasia can be seen. And there is a, a, certainly can, some uh, possibility that this is part of a continuum from sort of disordered proliferative endometrium, uh, which may have the same degree of glandular hyperplasia, just not quite so uh, closely spaced, um, and certainly without significant atypia again. So our final sign-out diagnosis today is uh, endometrial hyperplasia, uh, complex, uh, so to speak, with squamous morular metaplasia, but without atypia. Uh, and uh, clinical diagnosis of Asherman syndrome, uh, we would uh, not uh, comment on uh, pathologically, but uh, certainly uh, nothing to dispute uh, that uh, assertion. Well, thank you so much for joining us for this uh, interesting and challenging case. Uh, we hope that if you like this, you'll comment uh, and share it uh, with others who may be interested. Um, we certainly welcome your feedback and uh, hope that uh, you will uh, hit that button and subscribe. Uh, that uh, helps to ensure that you receive notice as future uh, videos are released and also provides uh, valuable feedback to us uh, as well. So uh, until next time, thanks again for joining us.